How do you guys respond to first day of You know, it's uh, uh, coming off the weekend. I thought it was good. You know, we've got you know seven, you know, you know six or seven new guys out here that got to get uh, uh, used to it. But you know, the first two days we utilized, got a lot of installation in. Uh, pads were good the first day. You know, I wish we were outside, but we got a great facility here that we were able to utilize. So, you know, we'll see. It, it uh, um, some good, some bad. Got a lot going on. A lot of snaps. You know, we started 4:15. It's you know, two hours and 15 minutes for us is a long time with the amount of plays that we, we get and how long we go. So, all in all, I like the energy. I like how it was going, and we'll we'll have a chance to watch a video with them tomorrow and come back Wednesday and, and then Thursday. So we'll have uh, five practices done before we get to spring break. You know, we'll be a third of the way done. Is there much thought process in, in moving the spring practice up versus sport? Because we didn't practice last year. No, I, you mean the first year. The first year we practiced probably the last team to practice because we had to um, – I thought it was important that we got to know the players <coughs> for to be around the players and, and get them going uh, and develop some relationships uh, and get some installation in. I think uh, three years into it um, with – the number of uh, off-season surgeries that we had and the ability to have some carryover um, and get guys ready to go. I think timing was different this year, and, and we're able to still get a seven- or eight-week cycle of, of strength and conditioning in and get, get practice going. So the first year was different. We started really late. We're probably the last team practicing. This year, it's just, you know, you're three years into it. You're, you're, every team's different. We just felt like... For the guys that we have, you know, it, it was better off. We're better off going early this year. With so many inexperienced receivers, what's the most important thing you're looking to get out of getting out of those guys? Reps, 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 reps. So, you know, and, and you're able to do that um, with coaching right now. But you know, the new rule, the the two-hour rule. You know, we in the off away from spring football, you have eight hours during the week. Uh, six hours of strength and conditioning, two hours of, of meeting time, which we've utilized. And, uh, and then they've gone out and done their own seven on seven. But th that, that's going to be really helpful also because it's the first year that that rule continues into the summer, the ability to meet in two hours. So uh, right now what you want to do is get as much video and as many reps with these guys as we can and get the video and, of the what to do and what the good and the bad. And, and so they understand throughout the summer and throughout the rest of this time, we, we still can coach them, but we can't be on the field with them. So reps right now are, are as important as anything. What is your goal for this from a coaching standpoint? Will you miss the spring game, or is that not really a factor? No, it's not. For me, it's more for the fans. I miss it for the fans. You know, you, you, you take uh, – shoot, last year we had 50,000 people here. We had ESPN here is a great recruiting opportunity, uh, great national exposure for the program. And it's a great day for, for fans. It was a beautiful day and get out and see the team. But from a from a, a football standpoint, I'll be honest with you, um, you know, I, I you guys know me. That second half goes real quick. <laughs> so I, after, I'm ready to get out of there. I'm just the goal of that day is to get some look halfway decent and get out of that thing and without getting anybody hurt or some guy getting all juiced up because he's playing in front of the crowd for the first time and. You know, so that's really the goal of that. And like I said, for the fans, it's a bigger deal for us from a recruiting, a national perception. If, like last year with, with the presentation of 50,000 and, and, and everything else, you know, that, that's what you miss. But I think, you know, from, from a coaching standpoint, we, we probably gain more from not splitting up a team. It used to be different, Brent, when, when you had, a, you know, 100 and some guys, you could split a team up. But it does, we have a hard time keeping quality by just completely splitting up. That's why we go offense and defense. I know fans get, get tired of that, but it's, it's worthless to us when you have guys playing with starters and guys that are out there that are never going to play just to make two different teams. That makes sense? So for us, we'll probably get more out of it from a practice standpoint. You have Friday coming up on Wednesday. What kind of turnout do you expect from the NFL teams, and what well, do you expect to see from your guys? I don't know. I, shoot, ever since we've been here, every team shows up. So 
you know, and with a couple different representatives. I don't know, I, you know, we, we had you know, guys did, a couple guys did real well at the combine. And uh, uh, obviously Mike was here last week and uh, was real pleased with, with how he did things. And uh, I talked to Johnny yesterday, last night, so he'll be back in town. And, um, and so, you know, I think it's big when you have uh, those types of marquee players and Jake, what it does is create opportunities also for other players who weren't at the combine. And, and uh, I think that's a big deal. And, and over the course, you know, like last year, I forget how many guys we we got to get into camp, but it was a large number of guys that at least got an opportunity that, that maybe they wouldn't have had if if there's not a Luke Jokel here, if there's if there's not those type of guys, because we had a bunch of guys in pro day, and uh, it, it attracted a lot of different guys, and just about all those guys got in camp. Which, you know, after that, that's about all you can ask. And, and did they all make it? No, but it gave them an opportunity, and I think that's the bigger picture than than just the, the three guys that went through combat. Dante Hall and Tiki Hardman are helping out. Can you take us through? Did Y'all notice that, huh? Official, yeah, is it official titles or volunteering, or what are they doing? Uh, How nice is it when former the, players here want to come back here? They're student coaches, okay. and uh, you know we we. Uh, a two-way process, you know, we have uh, ability, the guys have reached out, the, the former players that they are coming back, and we think it's important to, to finish their degree. Um, and, uh, you know, we have a number of players who went on to play in the NFL that, that may or may not have finished their degree, but um, when, when you have guys like that that, that love football, uh, and, you know, in particular, you know, the, the X factor that these kids know who he is. So if he's back there running around with, with a bunch of those guys catching punts, it's different than me and Coach Beatty yelling at them. They, they, they kind of turn their head and go listen to him because they watched him. And uh, uh, he, he, they're both doing a great job. They're back finishing up their degrees and came by and asked, you know, hey, can we, if we're here, you know, and that's a two way street. You know, they, they care about Texas A&M. Uh, and, and we want them to finish and, and, and have their, their degree. And, and while they're here, they're they're uh, they're uh, giving our guys some knowledge that uh, from a, from an aspect that, that can really really help them. And we're really appreciative of them. A couple more questions. You guys, good.